Okay, hi everybody. This is James Lynch. I'm the executive director of the Art Center in Highland Park. And this is a series that we've been creating called Talking With, where we uh, seek out and, and invite people in the uh, you know, various mediums of the arts who we think you'll find interesting and have uh, short chats with them and find out a little bit more about them. Uh, I'm talking today with uh, David Rudman, who is uh, connected to the Arts Center as a friend. Um, also around the Arts Center, he is known as uh, Mr. Karen Rudman because uh, yeah. he, he very humbly uh, um, always focuses on his wife, who is our curator here uh, of note, we should say. And uh, when he attends, he always puts the focus on, on her, but um, David's super accomplished and he's from Highland Park. So I love that idea. So. Um, David, introduce yourself, please, so I, that I don't mess it up. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I used to take classes at the Art Center when I was young, which I, I, I think I was six when I started taking classes at the Art Center. So it's always been a special place to me for my whole life. So I love uh, going to all Karen's exhibits and all of your openings and everything. So mm -hmm. I love supporting the Art Center. Um, so I, um, yeah, so I live in Highland Park. I'm, um, I have a production company called Spiffy Pictures, which we have, uh, so I run it with my brother, Adam, um, and it's in Highland Park. We have a couple shows on the air. Um, we have one that's called Nature Cat, which is an animated show on PBS. And right now we're in our fourth season. Uh, we have another one called Don Quixote which is also on PBS. And that's a puppet show that we shoot in Chicago at WTTW. Um, it's a national show. It's, it's actually gonna be around the world uh, soon. Um, and we just finished shooting our first season of that show. And that's a co-production with uh, the Fred Rogers company. Um, and we have a bunch of other things at Spiffy that we're developing and we're um, always working on different show ideas. And I also am a puppeteer for the Muppets and Sesame Street. So I play Cookie Monster on Sesame Street and Baby Bear, the two-headed monster. Um, and for the Muppets, I play Scooter, Janice, and Beaker. Um, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, I have lots of different things that I do within the television industry, so. You know, um, I've known you deal. several years and we've, we've never yeah. talked about the whole, um, you know, Cookie Monster and only like referenced it. And then, um, and I always cringe a little bit when somebody introduces you and Karen as a couple at an event or a social thing. It's like, and he's Cookie Monster. <laughs> and, and you try and play it down and, and you know, um, and, and, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a great accomplishment, but you are, uh, have always been very um, humble and, and, uh, um, you know, quiet about it. So thank you for, for sure. talking about it here. And um, I, I, as much as we could talk about any one of those, we're limited to around 15 minutes on this. And when I was thinking of interviewing you, the thing that intrigued me most was um, um, I, I know your, your career arc, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, my wife actually went to high school with, I think she's your brother's age. Um, mm -hmm. Adam. And um, so she knew you guys. And um, right. even talking to Karen, who, like I said, works with me, you from early on sort of knew what, what you wanted to do and where you wanted to go. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, um, you know, as a, as a kid, I was always interested in art and I was interested in television. Um, and I knew that I wanted to do something creative for a profession. Uh, mm -hmm. from early on, from like the time I was eight or nine. Um, and I think what I loved about puppetry was it was a combination of so many different art forms mm -hmm. um, in one. So, you know, I loved to draw and sketch and design characters. And that's kind of the first stage of building a puppet. And then once you have a design, then you have to make it, you have to sculpt it. So, you can figure how you can sculpt it out of wood or out of foam rubber, or you can use paper mache, or you can find found objects around your house um, to sort of create that character. Uh, and then unlike a regular sculpture that you make and just put on a shelf, 
once you've sculpted this puppet, you have to bring it to life. And so you, there's performance. So you have to act and sing and, you know, do improv. And um, so you're bringing it to life. And then on top of that, what I loved about it is then you can put that thing that you made, designed, built and performed, you can put it on television. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, you know, and use the puppet, use the television screen as like a puppet stage. And so that mm -hmm. always intrigued me. And that's always what I loved about, you know, watching the Muppets growing up is it was a combination of everything I love. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into it. Um, and I just, you know, taught myself how to build puppets by starting out at home, just using things I found around the house um, and then just started to do shows and kept doing them. How, you know? how, old, and, you, uh, how old were you when you did your first puppet show? Well, I think I, I started out doing birthday parties when I was maybe eight or nine. Um, and then, you know, I brought in some friends, uh, and we would go and do birthday parties and we became like the go-to birthday party <laughs> performers on the North shore for when, we, when I was in middle school. So we started to make money. Even we started to go and do these shows on weekends, kids, birthday parties. when I was, you know, I think 11, 12. Um, and, um, and then I started to do shows for school, um, and in middle school, I, I at Elm Place, I went to Elm Place. And that's the other thing is that throughout my whole career, early career, I had so much support and encouragement from not only my family, but also from teachers and students. Um, and that sort of kept me going too. You know, I got so much positive feedback all the way through, through middle school and, and even in high school um, that I just kept thinking, you know, this could, this could be a career. Like I could do this, you know, if I keep, keep going with it. And there was moments where, especially, you know, in high school where I was like, do I want to keep doing this in high school? Like, do people really want to see a, a puppet show when you're in high school? You know, well, man, you're um, reading my mind. I was going <laughs> to, yeah. you know, in high school, we're all like worried about what people think of us and, you know, yeah. our image and, and you're That's, still going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, again, it was really through support and encouragement from the teachers um, in high school because, you know, I'd done shows in middle school um, and they were really fun and people really seemed to enjoy them. And then when I got to high school, I was like, I can't keep doing this in high school. Uh, and I met with my high school counselor, Mr. Fromm, Dwayne Fromm. Um, and he, and I met with him at the beginning of the school year and he said, hey, I hear you have this hobby you like to do, you like to do puppets. And, and I was like, yeah, but I think I can't do that when I get to high school, I'll get killed. Like it just can't, I can't keep doing it. And he said, well, you know what, let me, would you mind bringing some of the puppets you made to show me? Like just, you know, to, so I can see what you're, what you're doing. And he goes, why don't you bring them by tomorrow? So I said, all right, so this is before school started even, it was like, like a couple of weeks before. And I remember going back to the high school with some garbage bags full of puppets that I made. And I took them out and I showed him. And he's like, oh, no, 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 you, you have to keep doing this. Really? Oh, and, cool. and he said, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that you keep doing this because you have to keep going. And he said, I'm gonna get in touch with the assistant principal and I'm gonna let you do a show for the freshman class. Um, and he kind of arranged it and really, pushed me a bit you know I, I easily could have just said you know what I can't do this but he you know said you have to keep doing this and so I sucked it up <laughs> and got my friends together and I said we're gonna do this and then when we were freshmen in high school and they gave me the keys to the auditorium and they said you have a month you know to get the show ready and so we did and you know a couple of weeks leading up to this um they made an announcement to the freshman class during announcements said, and coming up next Friday, David Rudman is gonna be doing a puppet show for the, for the freshman class. And I just kind of started to sink down in my chair a little bit. And people were, you know, I, people didn't, I think for that week, it was kind of like, what are you doing? What, what is this? So we did the show and it was like a big hit. Like it was, it went over so well. And we got a standing ovation at the end. And after that, walking down the hallways, 
you know, in school, people were like, we loved your show. It was great. It was, you know, so funny and, and people really loved it. And I got letters from teachers. And again, it was like the encouragement of the, of my peers and of the teachers and of my family that sort of kept me going, that kept fueling it. Uh, I know that was a long story, but it was like, that sort of really was the reason why I kept doing this. And then I kept going through high school and every year I did a show. Um, and, um, and I just kept building puppets and getting better. And then, you know, I got a job right when I graduated high school working for the Muppets when I was 18. So wow. that's sort of all. <laughs> you know, how kind of you just like sent him your resume or? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I kept calling them and said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm looking for a summer job and I love to, uh, you know, come out there and show you what I've been working on. And they, after like hounding them for months and months, they said, finally said, all right, come on out. So I went out there with, again, with a bag of puppets that I made. And um, it was my senior year of high school. It was during my spring break where all my friends were going to Florida and, you know, doing all kinds of spring break things. I went to New York with a bag of puppets, went to the Muppets and showed them what I'd been working on. And then they hired me. So they hired me for a summer job. And so I, was, I graduated high school and moved out to New York and um, started working for them as a puppet builder. Wow. So wow. that's sort of like how it all began. Uh, and then once I was in at Muppets, um, I was just there for the summer and then I was gonna go to college. Um, and I, before I left, I made an audition tape for Jim Henson, mm -hmm. um, who I hadn't met yet because he was in London working on a movie. Um, and so before I left, I made this audition tape, uh, left it with him, with, with the Muppets, went to college. Uh, and then two weeks later, I got a call from Jim's secretary and said, Jim loved your tape and wants to meet with you. And so that's kind of how it all, all began. Well, that kills the rest of the interview because I, <laughs> I wanted to ask. I just kept going. Was, Sorry. Was there ever a period <laughs> after that when you got stuck and you were like, you know, um, what, you know, was there a second career or choice? Well, no, I mean, I always really knew I wanted to be involved in television. Um, mm -hmm. I knew I, you know, there was so many things that I loved. I loved animation. I loved even commercials. I thought, you know, working in advertising would be fun. Like I, I kind of just knew that I wanted something, um, in the, you know, the, um, the television film world. Um, and I knew, you know, that whether it was, you know, working for Muppets or, or whatever, um, I knew that that was something that I wanted to head towards. So, um, you know, it just, I kept, you know, through college, I kept working for Jim and the Muppets and, um, and learning the television industry, like learning how to direct and learning how to produce. So it wasn't just the puppetry side of it, it was the writing and the producing and the directing part that really also fueled me. Um, and I just kind of soaked it all in. It was like going to the best film school like you could ever go to is watching Jim Henson and Frank Oz work, you know? Um, and so, you know, that was, that was the other thing is that, you know, it was, wasn't just the puppetry side of it, it was television and creating my own shows and directing and that whole side of it. And that's, what kind of what interests me all, as well as the performing side of it it was all that part too so mm -hmm. i kept you know learning that and then so now i'm you know not only do i perform but i produce and direct and write for television um and that's sort of was um you know that was just it just kept going it kept like you know one thing kept leading to you the had, other. um one of your um productions is uh, nature cat yeah, and, and we had a um, we had a nature cat date here a, a Saturday, and uh, somebody came dressed as nature cat and right. welcomed the kids. And you know, it, it was amazing. The kids would walk in the door and see nature cat standing there. And I remember one kid and his feet were just like he, he was pumping his feet. It was so exciting. Right, um, right, and. Uh, <clears throat> I, I wound up watching a few episodes and it's the cat. A, a lot of the cast is from Saturday Night Live. Um, yeah. 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 So we, yeah, we developed the show with PBS um, and it took at least 
three years to get that show made. It was like, it takes a long time to get a show on television. Um, and especially one where you're teaching a nature curriculum, you wanna make sure that you're teaching it the right way. Uh, we have curriculum advisors on the show that are fantastic and they help us, you know, make sure that we're teaching the, um, you know, the lessons the correct way and the kids are gonna get the most out of it. Um, so yeah, but on, and then once we got the green light on the show, um, we reached out to comedians because we really wanted to, we really pushed the comedy on the show as well. We, we look at it as Looney Tunes with a nature curriculum. So we want it to be funny and educational. So um, I'm friends with Bobby Moynihan from Saturday Night Live. Uh, and so I went out to him and asked him first to see if he wanted to play a character. And he said, yes, I'd love to. Um, and so once Bobby was on board, he started to talk about the show um, amongst the rest of the SNL, you know, cast members. Um, and suddenly we, uh, you know, we were getting interest from other other people like Kate McKinnon and Taryn yeah. Killam and Keenan Thompson. And so that was our cast. We, you know, we have all these great improv performers who do voices for Nature Cat. We, and you, we actually just- done guest shots on uh, Saturday Night Live a couple of times, right? As, yeah. As, yeah. It's Cookie Monster. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was on the show a few, few times. Uh, so I got to know a bunch of the people over there. Um, and they're all big Muppet fans. So, um, so it was, you know, they, um, they all agreed to do the show. They, you know, they, they embraced the nature curriculum and they, they love the message. Um, and so we just let them go with the recording sessions. You know, it's so fun. We just recorded Kate McKinnon uh, an hour ago. For an episode of a couple episodes of Nature Cat, and um, they really just bring so much to the characters and to the humor of the show. Well, knowing who's voicing it, it, it kind of adds to the fun. Uh, uh, yeah, of, of watching it. Um, yeah, it's always there's something there for everybody. It's not just right. for kids. You know, parents um, will laugh hopefully as much as the kids will laugh. Yeah. Now, and and you chose to stay in Highland Park and create your. Uh, Spiffy is here, located yeah. you know headquarters, and yeah. you work with your brother um, Adam, yeah. right? So yep. Um, Why did you stay in Highland Park when you could be L.A. or New York or? Well, we we lived in New York, um, and I lived in New York for at least ten years before uh, before we moved back. Mm -hmm. um, and we we were in New York. We we had two kids in New York, and when our kids got to be school age. We really wanted to raise our kids here. You know, we, I grew up here. My wife Karen grew up here, yeah. um, and we are all of our families here. Uh, and we love the school systems. We we love you know having the family support. Um, and so we decided to move back. And I kept a little apartment in New York, so I just would mm -hmm. go back and forth. Um, and so that's really why we we moved back. Um, and then that was right around the time that I started to develop uh, um, projects with my brother Adam. Um, so we worked to, we worked together since the mid '90s on different shows, um, and so we would just kind of throw out ideas together and come up with different shows and different things. And um, we um, started to collaborate, and then we decided to turn it into a production company. So. Um, we, at the beginning, we started to do interstitials and short form projects for MTV and Comedy Central and Nickelodeon. Um, and then that kind of led to longer form TV shows. Uh, and then we, we had a show on Nickelodeon called Jack's Big Music Show, which um, we created in like 2004 or five. And then a show called Bunny Town, which was on the Disney Channel. Um, it's like 2009. 10, somewhere around there. Um, and then Nature Cat and now Don Quixote. Uh, so yeah, we, we enjoy working together. Um, you know, we're very in sync with what we like. And um, uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been a great partnership. You know, um, your, your wiki page, your Wikipedia page. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You, you Who knows how accurate that is? But <laughs> it, it says right at the top, you know, this really needs updating. But yeah. you know, um, it, but it, what what I found funny was at the, at the bottom of the page, it it says that your brother is Adam Rudman, mm -hmm. 
And when it, you go to Adam and you read down to the page and he said, and it says he is the uncle of Joey Rudman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> is it really? That's one thing you could update is put your own son you on it. That. I know, yeah. I, I know he's also, um, you know, creating a career. He's done some, some voices or some production yeah. work with Spiffy. Yeah, he does a lot of voices on Nature Cat and uh, does lots of other voiceover work. And, and Adam gets more credit for your son than you do. I mean, you should. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, first of all, thanks for everything. Um, yeah. What What's coming that you want to tell people about? You know, we don't, we don't have a huge uh, viewership, but uh, you know. Yeah. What, what well, should we know um, about what's coming for you. Well, there's, um, well, Don Quixote is, uh, just started airing on PBS. Um, it started in May. Um, there's going to be new episodes that will be uh, rolling out over the next um, six months or so. So, um, you know, keep an eye out for those new episodes um, where we start shooting our season two on Don Quixote in, in June. So that's going to keep going, you know, uh, season four of nature cat i'm not sure when it starts but it's um might be in the fall maybe i'm not i'm not exactly sure but be on the lookout for for that um and um you know there's always sesame street we start shooting our season 53 this week uh so that's that's um you know that's still going strong too so yeah and uh i i know that during covid you shot some things in uh in your own kitchen, in your in your own house. Yeah, you know, it was so fun. It <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They well, sent ooh. Cookie Monster here, and I had all my kids helping me. So that's well, fun. It was and it was really fun. Yeah. With with all this going on, with everything that you you're, you've done, you're producing everything you have more. You always seem so calm and and laid back. It, so is it is it like the duck that's calm on the front and then paddling yeah. up the bottom? Or I, have, like, I know you just yeah. flew in from Florida yesterday, and you're yeah. flying out this afternoon. And yeah. It's a little bit, I mean, it, it goes through stages. There's moments where I'm very overwhelmed, you know, with things, but, um, you know, I just try to keep my schedule set and, you know, I have a priority list. So, um, uh, you know, so far, knock on wood, things are, you know, been going, going smoothly. So, mm. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think a lot of the people that are going to see this are somehow related to the arts or artists themselves. And um, the, the, what amazes me is is that your your singleness of purpose. You know, uh, a lot of people, myself included, our, our careers were over here, over here, over there, over there, and and you know it wasn't a straight line. And, yeah. Uh, either it's great karma, you know, <laughs> that you have, or like obviously great talent. But um, the, the fact that you just you knew where you're going, you just kept at it. You got a little discouraged. You found a mentor, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just kept shooting, you know, shooting big, shooting for the next yeah. and, and it worked for you. And, and it's, it's so great to be talking to somebody who casually mentions Jim and you mean Jim Henson, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jim and Frank, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, um, I, I should have I should have said Jim Henson Frank. Uh, no, you did. No, but, no yeah. you did. I, oh, did I'm I? Just, <laughs> it's it's a little reflected, like um, you know, I, I I know a documentary maker who who made uh, interviewed uh, Maya Angelou, you know, before mm -hmm. she passed, and, and and I'm it's just like reflected glory, you know, like oh you you spent time with her, what was she like? But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I feel very lucky, you know, that that uh, that I was able to you know be you know, work with them for so long and learn from them and you know uh, especially you know Jim was such a great mentor and he was really he was yeah. a great guide and because he never really told you what to do he kind of guided you you know yeah. and really let you find it yourself and um, you know he always gave me great advice but early on like get as much experience as you can don't wait for us get out there work whatever you're doing, it's all helpful in the long run. It's, you know, it's all about experience and, um, you know, don't sit and wait. So, oh. you know, it was really great advice for me when I was in my, you know, early twenties, cause I could have just, you know, you know, just waited around for the phone to ring, but, you know, I just got out there and met people and pitched ideas and, you know, um, 
you know, for, for the one idea, for the one show that gets made, there's probably like 20 shows that don't get made. I mean, I have folders and files, you know, that are just filled with ideas and, you know, that never got anywhere. So you just got to keep, you know, persevering, keep pursuing, you know, your, your uh, dreams. So, yeah. Well, I, I said this is only going to be short. It, it's probably, I forgot to set the timer. It's probably longer. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> than, I get it. Yeah. And I promise, and, and you got to go, but I, I got to say, um, looking at your results, knowing your family, meeting your kids and, and working with your wife, you, you, you've done a lot of things right. And, uh, and, you, and you deserve it. So thanks for spending time. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Look forward to see you, um, you know, at some point you're, Four blocks away from where I'm yeah, I know. <laughs> right now. But <laughs> uh, right over. we'll see you here. Thanks a lot, David. It really means yeah, a lot of course. to us at the Art Center that you're you're a good friend. You took the time today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.